This question is rather simple looking, at least before we head to the data statements, which we can do now, evaluating them separately first. Statement one tells us that V plus W is greater than zero. Subtracting W from both sides, that means that V is greater than minus W. We might ask whether this fact allows us to answer the question given to us definitively. It might appear to allow us to answer the question definitively in the negative. To be sure, we can analyze by cases. We can imagine a case, call it case 1, in which v is 7 and w is minus 1. This case is allowed because the sum of these two numbers is greater than 0, as statement 1 requires. And in this case, the answer to the question posed to us, whether v is greater than w, is yes, because 7 is greater than minus 1. However, we can construct another case, call it case 2, in which we switch the values of the numbers. This case is still permitted because the sum of the values is still greater than 0, but in this case, v is not greater than w because minus 1 is not greater than 7. We have obtained different answers from valid cases to the question that has been posed to us, so we don't have sufficient information to answer the question definitively. Statement 1 is insufficient. Statement 2 tells us that w to the v power is negative. The only way that could happen is if w itself is negative. Therefore, this data statement allows our case in which v is 7 and w is minus 1. And as we see here, as we already have seen, it's true that v is greater than w in this case, and the answer to the question given to us is yes. So now the question is, could V be less than W in an allowed case? Indeed, it could be. V to the W could be minus 2 to the minus 3 power. Minus 3, or V, is less than W, which is minus 2. It's left of it on the number line. And minus 2 to the minus 3 power is negative 1 eighth, which is less than 0, and therefore this case is allowed by statement 2. So again, we have a yes and a no to the question posed to us in cases that are permitted by the information. So statement two is insufficient. Combining the statements, we prefer to use pre-existing cases if there are any that are allowed by both statements. Indeed, the case v equals seven, w equals minus one is allowed by both cases, as we've already seen. It gives us a yes to the question of whether v is greater than w. The other cases are no longer allowed. To see why, we can look at statement 1. From statement 2, w has to be negative. But by statement 1, if w is negative, then v has to be positive. That's the only way to get the sum above 0, as statement 1 requires. And if w is negative and v is positive, that means in all allowed cases, v will be greater than w. We can answer the question, therefore, definitively in the affirmative. We have sufficient information together, and the correct answer is C. This was a typical finish to a question in which rules, such as number properties rules, were in play in the question, but we didn't necessarily know what the rules were, or we might not necessarily have seen the pattern at first. What will happen is that you can analyze by cases, and you may hit a moment when you notice a regularity. Here it was the fact that when the statements were combined, V had to be positive and W negative. Keeping an eye out for conclusions that you can draw will be superior in general to attempting to analyze by cases through what you could call brute force. Again, the correct answer is C.